What if I'm bad at setting expectations? Today on the What If Brigade, I want to talk about how our background and experiences can shape our expectations in a way that we don't even necessarily even know. Uh, and I realized this uh, uh, when I saw a comment on Twitter, a, a dangerous pastime, I know. Uh, <clears throat> But it was talking about uh, how uh, that particular uh, GM uh, liked to put in uh, personal effects uh, uh, for uh, slain enemies. So if you're um, looting the bodies of some orcs that you've killed, uh, you might find uh, uh, something um, that indicates that that orc had a family. <laughs> and. Uh, some people were horrified at this, and they said that you should absolutely not spring this on your players, and this like it, that's the kind of thing that you want to talk about in advance, and how it would just that would just ruin a game for them. And uh, uh, but I didn't really see anything wrong with that at all, and I want to talk about why that is, uh, and uh, so. Uh, as, as many of you know, I started out playing uh, Robotech uh, millions of years ago. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with the basic uh, storyline in Robotech, there's an anime and there's books and there's a, there's a role-playing game. But it's a lot like uh, in U.S. history where uh, the U.S. starts out uh, in a war against uh, uh, the British and then by World War II, they're storming the beaches together. Uh, so uh, the Zentradi and the humans are at war uh, at the beginning of the, the first uh, Robotech war. Uh, but gradually, uh, by the end, uh, some of the Zentradi are allied with humans um, and, and remain so uh, for uh, the, rest of, um, uh, the rest of the series. Uh, there are, there's a um, second series and there's a third series, all those kinds of things. But essentially, even by... Uh, the, the very first book uh, and a lot of the scenarios and, and definitely by the second RPG book, uh, uh, Zentradi would be playable characters. Uh, and so uh, there, there aren't, if you look at the, the anime is a lot less subtle about it, but um, uh, in the RPGs, if there, if there are some subtle efforts to humanize the enemy, that doesn't seem that weird because the anime was doing that too. Uh, so it, it, it didn't really like register um, as uh, a huge shock to the player characters. And, you know, the very first role playing book has like the entire timeline written now, you know, you know, that um, that some of the Zentradi are going to join the humans later. Uh, you know, it's it's not it's not that big a spoiler, I guess. Um, <clears throat> sorry for sorry for uh, spoiling your uh, 1980s uh, 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 translated from Japanese uh, anime. But um, <clears throat> my point is that that was my introduction to role playing, and so uh, you know, even though Zentradi, uh, there there is a big conflict and there is a big war, even though there 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 is massive uh, loss of life on both sides, uh, uh, you, um, I'm I wasn't supposed to think of uh, the Zentradi as subhuman. Uh, they're supposed to be humanized by the process. Uh, and so uh, when I got into uh, other uh, Palladium uh, role-playing games uh, later, uh, I, I wasn't ever really taken aback by uh, subtle efforts to humanize uh, the enemy. Uh, now, I'm not saying that, you know, every time you killed an orc, you found a, a picture of uh, they weren't. They were clutching a picture of their dead family. You know, their their wife and kids. No, uh, no, a, a lot, a lot more uh, subtle. Uh, you know, um, maybe a hairbrush, maybe a, a fancy dress. Uh, you know, maybe uh, you know a treasured artwork. Those kinds of things. Things that are essentially worthless as loot, but illustrate to the characters that that the enemy was uh, a sentient creature that had a life. Um, and again, like I said because of my earlier background, uh, uh, where uh, I was used to adventures that, um, you know, not always, but sometimes can humanize the Zentradi, um, then, um, you know, I, I wasn't really surprised at that. And I think, you know, you kind of get to 
Uh, it goes even further uh, by the time you get to the Adventures in the Northern Wilderness, which is my favorite setting in Palladium. And there you have uh, the Wolfen Empire, which is actually a republic, a multiracial republic. There are humans, uh, there, are, there, there are orcs, there are kobolds, there are, there are lots of creatures there. And uh, some of them are bad and some of them are good. And, uh, and you, you, you know, and, and the human, uh, kingdoms that are attacking the, the Wolfen Empire, it, it is very hard, uh, to spend any time with that setting and not conclude that the humans, the human kingdoms are the baddies. <laughs> like they're basically fighting against, uh, democracy and, and peacefulness and, and the, the fledgling, you know, um, the fledgling uh, creation of, of, of people actually having rights and responsibilities <laughs> in favor of feudalism and slavery and, and those kinds of things. And it gets even less subtle when you get to Palladium's rifts where uh, the, the human coalition forces are full on Nazis. Uh, they're not, they have skulls on their uniform and they are uh, human supremacists and they're, they're bad people. <laughs> so, so, um, but you know, again, you, you really get, you really get, uh, a, especially as, as time goes on, you play lots of these adventures, uh, you know, uh, uh, you really learn that, that not, not everything that looks weird, uh, is something to kill. And not every human is a fantastic, wonderful person who, uh, you know, is a trading partner. Um, and, uh, you know, because that was my background in, in role-playing, I've never really thought about setting the expectation that, uh, that there might be subtle clues. And again, like I said, even in Palladium, you know, some people may have played Palladium as a kid and like not picked up on any of this. They're like, what? That was, that was supposed to humanize them? Ah, you know, probably not. That was just an Easter egg. That was just a joke. Uh, you know, it, it was, it was subtle. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't necessarily, like I said, it wasn't necessarily overt where, um, you know, they confronted you with the, the wrongness of your actions at any, every turn. Uh, it was more like, uh, the, the, the other, the monsters were always presented as, um, playable, well, not all of them, but most of them were presented as playable races that uh, were not irredeemably evil. Um, and, uh, they, you, you could empathize with them. Um, and, and definitely some adventures more than others, some settings more than others, but it definitely did happen where, you know, you look at, um, the so-called monster races and you think, you know what, they're, they're not the monster here. <laughs> so, so I, I have never thought about explaining that, uh, to, to players, uh, because that's, uh, my background. I hadn't really considered that there are people who think that, um, orcs and goblins should always be evil and killed on sight. And, uh, and that's just the way it is. Um, and yeah, I, 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 un I understand that, 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 that is a trope, but I just wasn't aware that there were people that understood there were other possibilities, uh, who didn't understand, you know, that, that, that it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. So, um, you know, maybe something for uh, me to keep in mind uh, in the future with uh, expectation settings. But I think this also illustrates a larger point in that whatever your background, it's going to give you certain blind spots where you think, oh, man, you know, everybody has played D&D &D and everybody knows exactly, you know, what I'm talking about. Uh, and so I don't need to explain that uh, to new players because... Um, you know, that's, that's their mindset. Or even if you know, they haven't played D&D, &D, you don't, you don't think about the fact that maybe the way the adventures are written, uh, in, in a, in a book or, or, and then of course, how those influence, uh, other creators, uh, to, to write adventures in a similar style that, that there's going to be some parts to that, that, um, you just take for granted and, uh, that, that we all take for granted. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I thought that was really interesting and, uh, you know, a great opportunity to kind of reflect on uh, how our background, how, how, how you know, the, the games and adventures that we've played and how and the GMs that, that have have organized those for us, how those have uh, changed, you know, how we look at role playing games 
and uh, you know how we look at stories and what our expectations are. And so I thought it was a, uh, a really interesting thing to think about. Uh, how about you? What is uh, something where you've realized that your expectation was completely different from uh, what, uh, what other people uh, expected? And you know, if you got it from a particular uh, role-playing game or, or book or uh, a movie or anime or something like that, uh, let me know down in the comment section below. This has been the What If Brigade. Have a great day.